Carl, we're back already for week three of our maintenance crash course, and today is all about our chains, how they work, why you should maintain them, and then how to fit a new one. After all, our chains are incredibly important components of our bike, which are often overlooked. If you could all turn to page 63 of your road bike maintenance book, God, I'll never get bored of saying that, it's amazing. You'll see the transmission section, where there is loads of handy information all about the drivetrains of your bikes. And over on page 68 is the section on how to replace your chain, and that'll be particularly helpful later on in the video when we get to that stage. And this is the chain of our bikes, designed to transfer our motion into the bike and drive it forwards. There are loads of different chains available. You've got single speed ones, six speed, seven speed, eight speed, nine speed, 10 speed, 11 speed, 12 speed. There's even 13 speed. You get the idea. There's loads of different chains available. When we say we need an 11 speed chain, we're actually referring to the number of sprockets and gears on our rear cassette, not the actual speed the chain runs at. That would be ridiculous. But remember, even if you've got a chain that's the correct speed for your bike, it needs to be designed for that geared system. For example, Shimano and Campagnolo chains aren't interchangeable. There are other brands out there that manufacture chains for Shimano, SRAM and Campagnolo, and those give you plenty of different options. Our chains consist of links and rollers held together with pins. The links, you've got inner and outer links, named so because of their position on the chains. The rollers articulate as the chain rotates all the way around through our gears. This is an outer link, this is an inner link, and this is a pin that holds it all together and houses that roller. The reason our chains have all of these parts is to allow them to rotate and conform and follow the outline of our chain rings, our cassette, and flow through the rear derailleur and interact with the pulley wheels. And we've got the inner and outer links and the rollers that are perfectly matched to the shape and profile of the teeth of our chain rings and the teeth on the cassette and the pulley wheels. As the chain rotates through its motion as we're pedaling our bikes, that is when the links and the rollers will move the most, particularly on the tight radius curves that we see at the rear of the bike. And it's for this reason that we need to correctly lubricate our chains because as these parts move and interact with each other, friction is created. And that's the reason we need to lubricate our chains to increase the service life of that component. As we pedal our bikes and also shift gear, our chain is exposed to lots of different loads, be it side to side or the rotational load. And also as we apply more pressure through the cranks of our bike. This in turn increases the friction on these rollers and the pins and all the links. And as such, over time, the friction will wear away at the materials on these components. And that's what we are often refer to as a stretch chain. But in fact, our chains don't actually stretch over time because they are incredibly strong. What we're referring to is the fact that the material on the rollers and the pins has started to wear away. And that changes the distance between the rollers and as such is slightly different to the distance on the teeth of the chain rings and the cassette. And this is referred to as the pitch of the teeth or the pitch of the chain. And if we don't replace our chains, when this sort of wears away and changes that pitch, that's when we run the risk of wearing away the other components on our bikes, such as our chain rings and the cassette, and these are particularly expensive to replace. You can check the condition and wear of your chain using what's called a chain checker. This will be a specific gauge or device which slots onto the chain and will indicate to you when you need to replace it. Something that you should do every couple of months or so, there's no need to do it like every week. Something else that you can do to prolong the life of your chain is just keep it nice and clean and correctly lubricated. The easiest way to maintain your chain is to use a good quality degreaser at the stage when you're washing your bike. Spray it on, give it a good scrub with a stiff brush and then you can wash it all away with some clean water. And then the most important part is to dry your chain correctly afterwards. You can just use an old rag or a cloth to dry it off nicely. And once it's dry, you can then apply any chain lube of your choice. And there's literally loads of different ones out there. So take your pick of whatever suits you. You can just apply the chain lube directly onto the rollers. You don't need to go mad and apply loads, just a little bit. Work it through into the rollers and then use your old cloth to wipe off any excess. Jobs are good then. 
There are literally hundreds of different degreasers and chain lubes out there, but for a simple do-it-all approach, you can just use these. And for a more detailed look at how to lubricate your chain, turn to page 222 of your maintenance books. Right then, on to replacing a chain, which is actually a nice and simple job, and you are gonna need a tool for this. So you're gonna need a chain tool. Some multi-tools will have them on, but if not, what well, can just be the next tool to add to your collection. And if your chain has a quick link on it, or you wanna add a quick link when you put your new chain on, it's also helpful to have some quick link pliers such as this. And if you haven't got some, well, they can be the next tool to add to your collection. Fantastic. Like I said earlier, we can use page 68 of our maintenance books to help guide us through the process of replacing our chain. And when it comes to getting your new chain the correct length, there are a couple of different ways to go about it. But before we do that, I'm gonna to need to get the chain off of my bike so that we can work out how to get it the correct length. There are a few different methods to getting your chain to the correct length. There's the method in the essential maintenance book, and then there's also the method that I tend to use. And that is where we loop our chains around the largest sprocket on the cassette, leaving out the rear derailleur, round, loop it around the largest chainring on the bike, and then we find the point where the chain meets together and has no slack. From that point, you would then add two additional links to that, and that should give you the correct length chain. Now, if you're gonna use a quick link, like I'm gonna do, then you only need to add one link instead of two when you're adding that additional section on. But something that you do need to remember is that to use a quick link, you need to have inner links left on both ends of the chain so that this can join them together. And if you're unsure whether to make the chain slightly longer or shorter to make sure you've got those inner links on both ends, I'd always advise making the chain that little bit longer because you can always shorten it at a later date, whereas you can't make your chain any longer once you've got it short. Having identified the point on our chain where we're gonna adjust it to be the correct length to suit our bike, we can then take our chain tool, put it onto our chain and then do it up to guide that pin and drive the pin out of our chain so that we're left with the correct length chain and the correct ending to join them together. And if we're gonna use a quick link like I am, which is by far the easiest way to join your chain together, you need to check what type of quick link you've got because some of them are single use only, whereas others can be taken on and off of the bike with no stress at all. Having got our chain set to the correct length, we can move on to putting them back onto our bikes and we can guide it through all of the different components on the bike and then to make life super easy, if we shift into the lower section of the cassette and use the small chain ring, we'll have a little bit extra chain length to help make joining it together at the bottom section nice and easy. As you're guiding the chain through the rear derailleur cage, something that you need to make note of is this little tab that sits in between and can make it a little bit tricky to guide the chain through. And as we do so, just pay attention to that. Having got our chain on the bike, we can next use our quick link to join the two sections together. Two little points we need to note here. Firstly, our quick link has a little arrow on it to make sure we fit it the correct way around, so the way the chain will rotate when you're pedaling. Secondly, on a Shimano chain like this, we need to make sure we have the chain the correct way round, and that is with the text facing out towards us. But depending on the type of chain you've got, just double check what way is correct for that chain. So we can then pop our quick links in, use our pliers to make sure the links engage correctly. Job done, nice work. And this week's homework is to read up on the remaining drive chain components on page 20 and page 21 of the maintenance book. Hope you're enjoying this mini series so far. And if you wanna see more maintenance videos like this, consider subscribing to GCN Tech and hit the bell icon to be updated with our latest videos as they come out. Although our maintenance crash course is every week on a Monday. You know that by now. <laughs>